I look around here and I see for you to see me, and I'm a person that's going on in years of age. But if I had known these rituals in the beginning, this age and decrepancy would not be on me. Perhaps some of the things, yes, spiritually no. But anyway, that's the way I want you to know and I want you to go into the spirit and into yourself and let God there be having a temple to dwell. The thing I had of heaven me is from day to day, a day tomorrow, a few months ahead. I have to look ahead to earn money to carry on this creation here, this place. And the creation of that and the dealing with human spirits is taking its depth and its toll on me. But I'm willing to carry on because I've seen a vision of a better thing and a better life. And it's for you and you and you, my friend out there, that sits in that chair or that lounge, or he may be leaning against the wall in despair, or maybe perhaps to meet a friend. You can tell by the posture how it's all gonna end. <laughs> yes, how it's gonna end. Yes, people. Uh, so in 2014, the Kohler Foundation came out here and did a two-year project to restore Pasquan. And I was uh, part of that team. I helped restore uh, a lot of this place, mostly the object restoration um, uh, walls with artwork and stuff like that. There was a multi, uh, there was multiple teams. There was Parma Painting Conservation who did the paints. Uh, so I would say about 99% of the paint outside is new paint that they repainted after I uh, and some other interns like color matched and like uh, document every single color you see out here before they painted, but inside about 95% of it uh, is original. original. So it stayed, now he died in the 80s? 1986. 86. They, the, oh, there's a new, kind of a... Yeah, so in New York, he had this vision, uh, um, Sorry, well, actually, well, some folks believe he was in New York, some folks believe he was down here. But the story I like is that he was down here working on the farms in 1935, uh, helping out his mother, who uh, is now a landowner, because she used to be a sharecropper with her husband, who passed away. <coughs> and then she became a landowner. Um, he was helping out the crops, and he had gotten sick, and he had a vision, and told him, uh, he was visited by this tribe called the Passacoyans, they tell him that he needs to build this place or to change his ways or he is done. So he goes back to New York, he has a second vision, followed by more Passacoyans, uh, visited by more Passacoyans, sorry, and they tell him that he needs to build Passacoyan. And so he dedicates his rest of his life to art. He's learning art, he's visiting museums and libraries. Um, He's also going to art galleries, learning about and museums, learning about art, um, and you know he became a fortune teller. He was a, um, a drag queen prostitute before all of that, and then he sort of just shifted it to being a fortune teller, and then uh, that's how he made a lot of his money. Um, and then in 1957, he moves back on. He moves to this property. This was his mother's house and he inherited it from his mother. So he moves here and immediately begins building, uh, quickly realizes that he needs some help to speed up the process. And being a self-taught artist and uh, not knowing how to do concrete work and all that, or had to learn, he decided to hire some folks who knew how to do it. And um, from what I've been told, it was mostly young African-American men. And he, in the 70s, he's paying his workers $10 an hour. Um, to help build this place. And you can actually find some of their signatures uh, out on the site if you look around. Um, so within 1957 all the way to 1986, uh, he pretty much built this place uh, with his crew. Until so, he took his life in 1986. He committed suicide, yeah. yeah. 
This, this structure we're standing in, this was part of the original house? Yes. Okay. This was actually his front porch, uh, and then he converted it to the front room, where he primarily told fortunes in this very room. Um, yeah. So he had to be doing pretty good as a fortune teller. Yes, actually, some of his customers in New York would drive all the way down here to continue. So he had a reputation that, uh, yeah. Uh, he, he believed that this tribe is so far into the future that mankind has uh, all race and all religions combined and become a new tribe, which is the Pasakoyans, and a new religion, Pasakoyanism. And it's basically everything come together to form this new utopia where everyone gets along and live uh, peace uh, peacefully and he also believed like no matter who or what you are you, you know you belong to Pasapal. Hello there all you people this is Marin County and Buena Vista is the county seat and I'm Eddie Martin it lives here. I created and drawed and sculptured and built walls and everything and was in my heart I always had a hope that my dream would ring and it's rung so true to just come here and you can see for you and for you and for all of you to cheer that there is a new way that'll show you and keep you from strife if you can be just a person and don't have to seek all these things in life that are not for you, the truth is for you and the things that you see. But you don't want to hurt anyone like you or me. So keep kindness in your heart and go on along and keep in the rhythm and keeping a song. But today I'm a poor man's psychiatrist. I sat down and stick with him and listen to his worries, his fears, his neurosis, and his complaints. I have to do this. And I want to tell you, world, out there, that I'm a creative person and is getting to again to destroy me. I must find some way, somehow, some help to keep this thing up for the day will come when everyone will seek the true way and the true life. You want to know what's troubling you, don't you, honey? Well, we're going to look in these here cards, and we're going to pick out 21 of them, and we're going to take them out, and we're going to interpret them for you. You pick them out from all along in the deck. That way you more, more like the spirit is guiding you to pick up a card. If you just pick them up, boom, a big hunk together, you don't get out as much results. Sometimes you do, though. Sometimes it's like a book. It's all plain right there before you. But people have their inhibitions and hang-ups. Let me see how many I got here. I wasn't counting them correctly. One of those trace, quattro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, 
Whoever dies, answer those who trace the Katosa, Kinsey. This is safe, this is Yeti, this is Elsa, this is Rave, Vente, Vente, Uno. Oh, trust mass. Okay, we're gonna look at these cards here, honey, and we're gonna spread them out for you and see what it says for you. Well, you got the ten of hearts, honey. That shows you your heart's gonna be divided. It's gonna go this way and that way. But I presume that'll be love of your family and love of your husband or your boyfriend or the one that you wish to love. That's the card of operation and divorce. Watch out. Marriage around someone you know at the present time will bring you tears, regrets, and divorce. I'm going to tell you, these, you young people, y'all jumping up here and marrying too fast and too quick. You better stop letting it just be the physical in your life. Face reality. Find out yourself and your own true self. I see journeys in your future, short and near, a land later to where foreign language is spoken, perhaps Mexico, Puerto Rico, all kind of places down to the there where Spanish is spoken. And uh, incidentally, it looks like you'll be connected here or turn interested later in learning a second language. I guess this will come through cable TV because I hope as time goes on they'll get some, some real education on it and not just this commercial job they're putting down on you. But marriage to anyone you know now brings you divorce and difficulties and unhappiness. It also indicates too of a man that as you've been associated with or a woman you've been associated with they can never bring you happy fulfillment of happiness. A short length of time, yes. But over here, see something stuffed in your cough, it's black. It's not dead. It's just what you had planned and your dreams, or else we'll say your castle fell or your dreams exploded. But anyway, you have hopes. Because here's another woman and you and a woman together. Here's a dark man later to give you aggravation and tears and disappointment. Trust and confidence in him. I see your future bright. Good things ahead. Here, honey, shuffle the cards and we'll look and see what else is for you. after the 17th of May. Tomorrow I won't be reading. I dig it. Huh? Seven twenty five. Lucky numbers they want. Play the lottery. Do they ever win? Do they have reason to believe? Oh, yes, if they didn't, they wouldn't be coming here. That's what most of my business is the lumber seekers. They come, how far away do they come from to get All them? over, West Coast, Middle East, Far East, China, Germany, Japan, everywhere. Those that are, are, can come in through this army outfit here, you understand? So you're a legend around here. I mean, people know about you to come for the numbers, but not, who come, how many people come for the art and how many for the numbers? 
No, one out of 50,000 maybe for the odd. One out of a thousand maybe. No, not that. They all come for the head work. It is just respects and the rituals and the dances they've done one by one. They always tried to improve them and look in their mind. And sometime they would dance a pattern of a kind. Now these cycles represent power. And with these circles, it puts you in touch with the universe. Because the universe has great force and great character. But it's being destroyed. Get up, boo. Cause man don't do his rituals no more. Uh, so, before he had his German Shepherds, Nina and Boo, mm -hmm. uh, he had about nine to twelve cats that he uh, trained to rush into his station wagon at the sound of a syllable. So he would go into the town of Buena Vista, or Buena Vista in this region, um, that's how they pronounce it. Yeah. Um, okay. He would go into this square, and that's where the hardware store is at. He would unleash his cats onto the locals buy his supplies, fill up his station wagon, and when he had an audience, and also I need to mention, he was always in full regalia whenever he left Pasaquan. So he stood out, right? Um, so he made sure he had an audience, people were watching him, and then he would perform a dance and a chant, and when he got to that syllable, the cats would rush into his car. 